Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at six legacy tools in Excel that I'm still using quite frequently, even though there's more modern replacements for them available. So let's take a look. The first tool we're gonna to take a look at is Flash Fill. So this is going to allow us to transform data based on simple patterns. So here we have some text values and inside each of them, we have a date. So we can use Flash Fill to extract that date. And all we need to do is give Excel a couple examples of what we want. And then we can use Flash Fill to get the rest. So if we go up to the Data tab, then we can click on the Flash Fill command here, and it's gonna fill in the rest for us. Here we've got some names, and they're all in lowercase. So we could use Flash Fill to transform those to proper case. So again, here's our first example of what we want. And Flash Fill also has a keyboard shortcut, so Control E, and we're gonna get Flash Fill to fill in the rest of those uppercase names. So if the transformation that we want is just some simple pattern, we can use Flash Fill to get that done. And it's gonna allow us to transform our data based on a couple examples of what we want. Now, depending on what we want to do, we have various modern alternatives. So one of the new functions in Excel we have is regex. So that's going to allow us to extract items from our text values based on regex patterns. So here we have a regex pattern that's going to identify any dates in a year, month, day format. And we can use the regex extract function to extract from our text values here based on that pattern. And there we got all of our dates. Now, maybe your data doesn't have a simple pattern. So for example, maybe the date in our text doesn't always have a year, month, day format. So let's change one of these. then our simple regex pattern isn't going to be able to pick that up. This is where something like Copilot might be useful. So this is Excel's new AI function. And it's going to allow us to give Excel a prompt. So in this case, we can tell it to give us all of the dates, and then we can supply the context of our text values here. And when we press enter here, in this case, we get our date from this value here, which doesn't conform to any particular pattern. The next tool we're gonna to take a look at is text to column. So this is going to allow us to split data in a cell into many columns. So for example, here we've got some addresses and we've got components of that address separated by a comma. So we've got the street, the city, and the country. And we wanna separate those into different cells. So we can do that with text to column quickly. So we're just gonna select all of our data here. And in the data tab, we've got our text to column option. Now it has two versions, so we have a fixed width and that's just gonna allow us to split based on a certain number of characters. Here, we wanna do a delimited, so we wanna split based on wherever the comma is. Let's click on next. Here, we've got our delimiter options. So we're gonna choose comma, but we also have custom option, so you can put in your own delimiter here. Let's click on next. And we can also choose to put this into a new destination. So we're gonna put it right here. And let's click on finish. And now we've got each of our addresses, city and country in different cells. Now Excel recently has gotten a text split function which does the same thing with a function instead. So text split allows us to split any text value based on a delimiter. So here we're gonna use the comma as our delimiter plus a space character. 
and when we press enter we got a dynamic array and so each of our values here is split out into different cells and we can copy and paste that formula down and get all of our addresses split out. So text to column is great if you have one-off use cases and you just want values and text split is great for creating dynamic solutions. The next legacy tool we're gonna to take a look at is removing duplicates. So here we've got a list of cities and some of them are repeated. So we just want the unique values. We can select all of them. And up in the data tab, we've got this command here to remove duplicates. Let's press okay. And Excel is gonna tell us that we found five duplicates and remove them and five are remaining. Now there's not a way to place those in a different cell. So make sure if you need your original data to make a copy of it before you apply remove duplicates. So let's just undo that. And the modern equivalent, we now have a unique function. And this is going to allow us to get the unique values from any array. So here, let's give it that list of cities with duplicates in it. And when we press enter, we get our unique list of cities. So the remove duplicates legacy command is great for one-off use cases where we just want values, but the unique function allows us to create dynamic solutions. So when we change one of these city values here, then our list of unique values is gonna update accordingly. The next legacy tool we're gonna to take a look at is checkboxes. So we recently got a modern version of these. Well, let's first take a look at the legacy ones. So up in the developer tab, we've got the ability to insert checkbox form controls. And that's just gonna allow me to draw a floating object. So we've got the checkbox and then a label. Here we can type in whatever we want. And if we right click on our checkbox, we can format our control. And this is going to allow us to link a cell. So here we can link it to this cell here that allows us to invert whatever our filter is doing. And because this is a floating object, we can group it to other floating objects. So here we've got this slicer to filter our data. And if I hold control and select both of them, then I can group them together into a single object. And now we've got this slicer checkbox combo. And here it's gonna allow me to invert whatever I'm filtered on with our slicer. So here let's filter our data a little bit with our slicer. And then we can quickly invert that selection. So the legacy checkboxes are floating objects, but the new modern checkboxes live inside of a cell. So here we can convert this to a checkbox. Let's go to the insert tab and click on checkbox. And now we've got a checkbox inside that cell and we can do the same thing. So the legacy checkboxes are gonna be great when you want a floating object, but you're gonna need to link that to a cell and the modern checkboxes are great when you want something in cell and you don't need to link it to any cell because it's automatically linked to its own cell. So modern checkboxes are gonna be perfect for lists. Here, let's add in some checkboxes into our done column. Let's go to the insert tab and checkbox. And now we've got a task list that we can easily check items off of. The next legacy tool we're gonna to take a look at is using wildcards. So here we've got a list of products and it's in a certain format. So we've got the product name, the size and the color. And let's suppose that we want to change all of these sizes. Then we can use wildcards in our find and replace to clean that up. So here we're just gonna select all of these and let's press Control H to open up our find and replace menu. And here we're gonna look for our dash. 
and then a space. And now we can use our wildcard character. So we can use the asterisk to represent any number of characters. And let's add in our closing dash. And then we're gonna replace it with our desired size. And we can press replace all, and it's gonna replace those 10 sizes, whatever they are, with our large value. Let's just undo that. Now we could also look for specific values if they have a certain number of characters using the question mark character. So if we add six question marks, that's only gonna replace the ones that have six characters in the size. Well, let's replace all of those. And now we've only replaced our medium sizes. Let's undo the. But now we've got regex in Excel. So we have the regex replace function that can do this for us. So here we've got a regex pattern that's going to look for those two dashes and then allow us to replace anything in between those. So here we can use regex replace and we're gonna replace text in these values here based on this regex pattern. And then we can choose what to replace it with. So here, let's replace it with large. And when we press enter, we get our replaced values. And now the last legacy tool I still use is VBA. So this is the original automation tool in Excel. Now we do have modern replacements such as Office Scripts or Power Query or Power Automate even, but there are still gonna be situations where VBA is gonna be the only viable solution. So I recently started building dashboards and I like to add these rounded corners onto charts and objects such as KPI cards and I wanted these to all be uniform. And in the ribbon, there's no way to set that. So I ended up creating a small VBA script to do that. So this actually wasn't possible in Office scripts. And even if it was, I wanted a way to quickly run it. And with Office scripts, I would need to go to the Automate tab and find my script and then open it and then run it. Whereas with my VBA, I can add it as a routine into my quick access toolbar and then quickly run it from there. So that way I can get totally uniform corner roundings on my dashboards. So those are five legacy tools I still frequently use in Excel depending on the situation. Do you still have a legacy tool that you're using in Excel? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear what everyone else is using. That's it for this video. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for future Excel videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next one.